live or we will be live in a few minutes? We're live right now. We're live going over the internet. The show starts at 3.02. Okay. So you're not going to see me in, in No, I don't think you're going to be in the show. Nine, two, eight, six, nine, two, eight. Please join us again next time for another special edition of the Brain Health Show. So what time do you go on? Today? Yeah. 302. Yeah, the preceding yeah, sponsored yeah, program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. This is Health and Wealth Radio, AM 1470, WWNN, Pompano Beach, and WKIS HD3, Boca well, Raton, we Miami, yeah. Fort Lauderdale. Hi, I'm Duke Libertori. And I'm Dr. Jan McBaron. We're a husband and wife team. And together we host the number one health talk show in the nation. Duke and the Doctor. You can hear our show weekday mornings at 10 oh, yeah, here on WWNN AM 1470 Health and Wealth Radio. We'll discuss up-to-date health news, give away gifts, share in a laugh or two, and answer health questions from our callers. So if you are ready to start feeling happy, healthy, and terrific, then tune in to Duke and the Doctor. Weekday mornings at 10 on WWNN AM 1470. Download the iRadio Now app for iPhone or Android phones. Free at your iPhone app store or Android app market. Take AM 1470 WWNN with you wherever you go. Hi, I'd like to apply for a student loan. Wonderful. We just need to verify that you've registered with Selective Service. But I haven't registered. Oh. Hi, I'd like to sign up for a job training program. Fantastic. This program is great for learning the skills that help you get a good job. Let's just check to make sure you've registered with Selective Service. Well, I haven't registered. Oh. Thank you for letting me interview for this government job. I'm really excited about working here. Well, yes, but your records indicate that you're not registered with Selective Service. I'm sorry. Young men who fail to register with Selective Service can find a lot of doors closed to them. The law requires that all men register with Selective Service within 30 days of their 18th birthday. If you don't, you lose your right to receive student loans and job training, and you're shut out of federal employment. Don't close the doors to your future. Register with Selective Service online at www.sss.gov or at your post office. I wanted to be in the military since I was a kid. Uh, we, I served in the United States Air Force. Field. I served a total of 16 years. I was deployed uh, 13 times. On well, my second deployment, four bombs I hit my vehicle. And at 19 years old, that's the first time I ever saw somebody die. Coming back, I was raging. I started having pretty horrible nightmares. I would wake up in the middle of the night, sweats. I started drinking a lot. I felt worthless. I guess I never recognized it in myself. Eventually, one day, I just walked into the VA hospital and said I'd like to see somebody. Don't suffer alone. you got to find that link with somebody that'll make you let it go. It all starts with going to the VA. There's a whole community of veterans that just want to help you out. It's for the guys who couldn't come back, so you owe it to them to live well. Because they're not here with their families. Visit maketheconnection.net. Tune in for laughs and surprises with The Boca Show, Sundays at 4, only on 1470 WNN. What you want to know, what you need to know, this is South Florida's Health and Wealth Radio, AM 1470 WNN. Here's some great news from Tom Trento, host of the daily WNN Trento Vision Show. Due to the unparalleled success of the Trento Vision Show, you now have an amazing opportunity to advertise on the Trento Vision Show. If you want more information about this excellent opportunity for your business, please contact Tom Trento at 561-319-5533. Or you can email him, tom at trentovision.tv. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. 
Welcome to Trento Vision, where bad ideas get pulverized and the truth will set you free. Trento Vision is hosted by Tom Trento. Tom can be reached at 561 319 5533 or Tom at TrentoVision.tv. Listen and watch every weekday from 3 to 6 p.m. on AM 1470 WNN and TrentoVision.tv. Now, let's get a peek at Tom's view of the world. Here's Tom Trenton. Okay, there's Tom Trento right there. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing today? We have like a reunion going on in this place right now. And um, But everybody who's watching goes, I can't see them. I can't. Oh, there. You can see a little bit of CJ. You can't see any of the our featured guest, Adam. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, I'm gonna put you on. You know what? We'll move people around or something. I didn't shave today. So. Uh, that's all right. That's right. And uh, and Paul is here too. Paul, we were looking at the there. It's the back of your head right there. But in any event, <laughs> welcome, welcome to Trento Vision. I on... you could see Joe. Oh, Joe. Yeah. Joe, ah, Joe. yeah Joe. Uh, what's interesting is um, our guys aren't here today. The yeah. the video crew yes. abandoned us. Yeah. What are we gonna do about that? What are you going to do about it? You're the boss. <laughs> we fixed it with an iPhone. An iPhone has been determined to be the most amazing invention of the past 200 years. There's something covering part of it, though. Is that? That's called duct tape productions. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, we is have, that why you can't see what you want to see on the screen? It's actually not. The quality is not too bad. This is amazing. I mean, we have very expensive cameras, yeah. and it's... Um, not much different than that, but we, we don't have the two shot and the video and all. We don't have all, we don't have all the slick stuff. No, but but people can still watch because people, when they saw you. And little, the phone still works. The phone works. And it's uh, ringing already. It's probably Mark. It's Mark. Move the camera this no, no, no. way. No, no, no. We know it works because Mark called up 20 times. <laughs> exactly that. you got to fix this. <laughs> yeah, the audio's not right. Our technician is in Orlando. Oh, my I gosh. Know. I am semi disembodied. Uh, yes, you are. Our, our guys today are at a Summit, Adam and Paul. We'll talk about it later. It is, Mark. Uh, <laughs> what do you want, Mark? Uh, uh, you guys are being all slick there with your little iPhone thing. Just let you know that this is not going to notice by our union rep. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you'll be fighting... You're being all good and funny up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get, we got it. We got it. You'll be fighting the <laughs> Apple Corporation. That's what you'll be fighting because right now for our viewing uh, for our viewing audience, um, Tom Trento here, Trento Vision, at five minutes past three o'clock on a beautiful Thursday. Uh, we don't have our normal cameras set up like we typically do. What we have is uh, we got a crew up at a unique uh, summit. You guys will be interested in this. It's a uh, Christian summit on Islam. Mm. How do we deal with the uh, the ensuing threat of Islam from a from a loving Christian perspective, but also from an, uh, an activist How Christian we perspective? Solve the problem so we got Sharia. we <laughs> see we can't play our Sharia bits or anything. <laughs> um, we're dead in the water here on the video end. Joe, you're going to have to maybe sing or dance or do something to entertain <laughs> the audience. He's doing my, my, my Sharia. Oh, there you go. Um, well, we have don't a little... need me anymore. I'm going to go take a nap. Okay. Oh, wrong. That is so wrong. Yes. Um, no, we got this picture. Have a good schluff. But in any, in any event, for the viewing audience, uh, we our cameras are up at an event that we'll tell you about in a little bit. And uh, we weren't going to have any video side, just the audio side from North Miami, all the way up to Fort Pierce, make a left on the turnpike, head up to Kissimmee, or you guys may call it Kissimmee if you don't live around Kissimmee, here. Kissimmee, you fool. Uh, oh, I loved, I loved when uh, the Houston Astros had their uh, minor league team there, and it was actually called what you think it might be. See, <laughs> is, oh, you're telling me it's not true? <laughs> oh, it wasn't called the Kissimmee? I, can I say that on the radio? Yeah, oh, yeah. Kissimmee Astros. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can say that. Uh, all right. Bourbon myth. Sorry about that. <laughs> Okay. When does Kenny come in? Next hour? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be here all show, right? I think the, unless I get kicked out for no, half the no, year. No, no, the no. next hour, no, no, the no, next no. hour is um, But you're a lawyer, right? I we're going to still technically a lawyer. It's not what I do on a we're day-to-day gonna, basis. We're going to get into all that. I'm okay. proud to say I'm not a lawyer in 47 okay. of the 50 states. I, <laughs> I got some stuff to do here, but we're going to get into that and uh our engineer after Joe leaves, Kenny is a 
he's the encyclopedia, he's the encyclopedia of sports. sports. It's yeah. like I played a uh, the you Alabama know. fight song the other day, right? And uh, Kenny, what is it? He goes, Meh. Alabama fight song, you know? And it's really obscure. It's not the Notre Dame one. So in any event, Tom Trento here once again, National Security Radio, making jihad fun. But uh, the reason for that, we've spoken about it extensively, is this is very serious stuff, as we know. I just found out from these good guys here that um, President Obama gave our friends up in Lebanon, Hezbollah, 200 armed, armored vehicles to help in the little spillover from Syria. So, um, and Joe Biden today, we'll, we'll get into that too, uh, wants to waive their... Um, their monarchical, what does a monarch carry? What is that thing? They have like magic wands? The scepter. Scepter, yeah, I guess a monarch could have a scepter. Wave it and say, no more guns. Get rid of all the guns and all of that stuff. Uh, but Yeah, you could just twitch your nose like this. And maybe, say, no maybe. Uh, in any event, uh, Mark is not here today, our disembodied voice. He is uh, up in Orlando, and uh, Invisible Mike is gone. But you're here. Welcome. But how I'm was, here. How was your morning. It was swell. Thank you. What you do today? Anything interesting? I'm not telling you. Oh, she's always secretive with this stuff. Yes. Well, you're so persistent. With okay. Your well, did you see the uh, Adam Taxon little flyer I sent out? Yes, I did. And I'm <laughs> so intrigued by the chicken wings, I can't even begin to express. <laughs> I was there. I think I was there when, when this was taking place. Do you remember when it was? I think, uh, well, one of the times I was in Wing Bowl twice. Uh, it would have been three years ago, probably, that particular time. Yeah, I was time. around. I was around. That was fun. It's, you're uh, making me hungry, by the way. I should have eaten lunch you know, before I came here. If you wanted to talk about this. There's the who's banging. No, I'm kidding. I'm, it was a joke for the audience. There's, uh, you're there with a couple of chicks, man, behind you. What is going on well, there? Well, that was um, a few years ago. And I'd like to say hi to Tara Lynch, if she's listening. I believe she's the one on the right with the longer blonde hair. You uh, don't know? I, I don't have it in front of me. I think, oh, uh, oh, I think oh, Tara, okay. Tara's the one who really stands out in that picture. But, you know, she looks at She stuff stands on quite out in this picture. Yes. Um, I believe she had a wardrobe. The other one stands out a bit. Yes. Uh, but that was my first trip in Wing Bowl. I think that would have been <laughs> Wing Bowl 2006, which would have been Wing Bowl... Uh, that would have been Wing Bowl 14. And they're now getting ready for Wing Bowl 21. This time, wow. we're illegal. Yeah, that's their theme. <laughs> well, well, let me introduce you guys to, uh, to the audience. Philly thing. Um, with us today in studio is a good friend of mine, Adam Taxon. Adam, if you could, no, it's going to be hard. I'm not really, not really going to be able to see you. Oh, there you go. Okay. There we go. There you go. Um, and Paul Singer. Now, Paul is a friend of yours, obviously, or he's your. Parole officer, or what is he? Um, <laughs> chauffeur? <laughs> yeah. Chauffeur. Sure. No, we drove down here. We drove down. We had a few things to take care of in Florida, and road trips are fun. And oh, I found out that this man of the world had never been to south of the border. And uh, oh. so it was obvious that we were not going to be flying down. And you need a good drive every once uh. in a while especially when there's no ice and snow on the roads. And so we drove down here and did a road trip. I was here just in time for my mom's birthday, which was on a Tuesday. Surprised her a little bit. And uh, let's just say the weather isn't so bad uh, down here in South Florida this week. My weather, parents have been yeah. coming 30 years, uh, 40 years maybe, and they say it's the best weather they've ever experienced. So oh, they come down for the winter time? Like they come for a couple of weeks uh, every winter. My dad schedules his vacation around that. It's this, been perfect. This is the way. Not to rub it in to all of you who are not uh, in South Florida right now. Now, you're in Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay. And, and Paul is in Philadelphia. He lives down the street. He's actually more of an expert on this stuff. So pump me up right now because when the substance begins, Paul's the one Paul's who's going to stand out. Don't um, worry. There won't be much. The, and you live in downtown yeah. Philadelphia. You too, Paul? I live in Center City, Philadelphia. Center City, yeah. yeah. Now, you guys drove from Philadelphia mm -hmm. because he had not seen south of the border. Oh, no, by the way. No, this is not the real reason. <laughs> We're actually on a mission from God. Oh, I want to hear about that. Okay. Well, All right. Basically, what had happened is we were following get a little some podcasts. Closer to we were following, I'm following some podcasts, and I was researching um, conversions to Judaism and why one of the big, on our topic and our relationship to our topic is. On. It's a Philadelphia guy. Oh, my okay. God. Okay. I grew up in Jersey, and we could always tell when you were at Seaside Heights or Point Pleasant or one of those, somebody from Philly said, I say water, say water. Water. What? <laughs> Water. And don't bring up any uh, NFL stuff this year. That's inappropriate. To oh, that's from true. Yeah. That's true. Yes. No, but we were traveling down. Basically, I had come across this interesting character, <laughs> uh, an interesting rabbi, who pretty much in my lifetime, you know, 49 years, is the first rabbi that is aggressively looking to convert uh, people to Judaism. 
Yeah, you never wow. see that. I'll never see that, never right? See because, that. In, in, you know, there's a big controversy. What happened in the original original Jews when... You're uh, Jewish? I'm Jewish. Yeah. And uh, You Orthodox or...? No, I'm just, uh, you know, don't call me late for dinner. No, no, but yeah. basically... basically <laughs> Basically, this you guy. You pork and all well, that stuff, or you? No, no. In, oh. in, in reality, I'm <laughs> Jewish, and I've I've lived my life as a Jew. But from a technical standpoint, there are those that would not consider me Jewish because my mother, maternally, I'm not Jewish. Okay. Okay. Oh. And in Judaism, if you don't know, mm -hmm. it follows. It's a maternalistic religion, in that. Well, then, how can you be if your mother's not? How Did can you convert? You be? Well, there's. Um, so they're getting into some very high inside baseball, but but the, okay. but the fact we have a rabbi in here. Okay. We have rabbi, you know, rabbi Kavon. He's probably listening. Okay, but basically, what we're talking about is, I mean, well, hang on, in five hundred thousand Jewish people live in our okay, in our so listening so audience. I know what we're talking this is about. huge, so you know, okay. and they're all listening right okay. now. I'm sure. Yeah. So basically, what, no we're, pressure, what we're talking about is that um, it's a very common phenomenon in American society. Is that you know, since the diaspora of Judaism, you have a lot of Jews who have married non-Jewish women and um, questionable, is their children Jewish? Do they need to convert back to Judaism? Oh, Even okay. if in their house, and then there's certain Jewish law that would say, hey, my name, my last name is Singer, sounds Jewish. I'm in real estate and finance, <laughs> a Jewish profession. You drive a Toyota Camry. Uh, you know, well, you know. Uh, is that a tell? Is that it? Really? Well, no. you got to be over 80. Okay. Uh, if you're well, over 80 and you're driving a Camry, you're probably Jewish in South Florida. Okay. Yeah. So if your mannerisms, if your last name is, sounds Jewish, if, you know, uh, these are problems. Look, I've been, if we want to go with, have I been in street fights in France with <laughs> Arabs and Algerians? Yeah. So oh, I guess they oh, thought okay. I was Jewish enough okay. to want to try and, you know, knock my block off. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. apparently I must have fit their acid test. But nonetheless. He's a mixed martial artist, though. Okay. So the okay. Arabs didn't do too well. <laughs> <laughs> but in any event, so it was very interesting to me, and I think it's probably interesting to a lot of people. And, um, you know, hey, what, what is this? that this guy would aggressively, one of the first guys in my lifetime that wants to aggressively, his program is to try and convert non-Jews to Judaism. Probably not to start with people who are already religious and already uh, morally or ethically um, living good lives, like maybe evangelical Christians or whoever, but, um, but certainly secular, humanists, atheists, Islamics. I mean, this guy is in the hood in uh, Miami Gardens. Or oh. Miami Beach. Yeah, Miami Gardens. Miami right. Gardens. Yeah. He's in the hood there, and he's like aggressively. You know, you know who he's talking about. No, I know the neighborhood. Oh, it's a rough, it's there. a rough spot. You know, yeah, you, yeah. you you can catch you can catch it good there, and uh, he's you know on the street evangelizing. You're kidding me. No, that's which, interesting. Which is a, such a unique. We should get him on the show. Phenomenon, and um, his, What's his name. His name is Rabbi Asher Meza, and his uh, I'll plug his website. It's. Uh, www.bejewish.org. So anyway, that was the reason. I, and you know, I wanted, I solicited Adam because Adam is the is the internet guy who knows how to really help videos go viral. And um, we talked about that. Tom and I talked before the show about that. Yeah, and, yes, and we'll be talking more about that. Yeah. And <laughs> so I wanted Adam. I wanted Adam to really to really meet this guy firsthand. Or actually, Adam wanted to meet him firsthand because, you know, there's a lot of guys that are phony and fakes and, mm -hmm. you know, sound good on Internet. But then when you actually go out and meet them, it's somebody else. And so we so we said, you know what, let's invest the time and energy. We'll run down there. Let's find out this guy's the real deal. Yeah, I wanted to feel him out. And he was the real deal. He was very impressive in person. Yeah. So, you know, part of his, his thought process in mind, too, is, look, from a security standpoint, if I can take someone who's currently my adversary – and convert them or convince them Amen. to believe in my religious ideology. I mean, I mean, uh, we, we talked about this with him last night. One of the fundamental flaws that Jews, and even in Israel, if we want to be self-critical of Israel and self-critical of Jewry, is that, hey, we have two million Arabs there that we failed to convert either. We certainly failed to convert them to Judaism. We did not allow them legally be to, to be converted to Christianity. So... Their default third religion was <laughs> radicalized you. Islam, you, yeah. which calls for our death. Yep. So from a security, you know, even from a pragmatic standpoint, 
it's an epic failure. Let me say something about uh, where, where I came from. My mother, who, whose birthday was the other day, part of also my reason for coming to Florida to surprise her on her birthday. Uh, my mother is Jewish, so there's not really a whole lot of doubt in that. And I hang out generally at, uh, am I still on? Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, at a modern Orthodox or... Actually, uh, you can back off a little bit. Okay. At a modern Orthodox or Chabad synagogue in Philadelphia. I mix it up a little bit. Sometimes I go to a Spanish-Portuguese one, which is fairly <laughs> uh, one of only like four in the world, and one of them is in Philly, maybe there's five. Um, but, you know, often you can fall into a rut. There's not much I have to do to be Jewish. Yeah, you try to keep as many of the commandments as you can. But the reality was, you know, many, many years ago, I was born to a Jewish mother. That's about it. And I think often we can get a little bit lazy. A lot of times people in, especially, you know, people who go to Chabad, you can go to a social event. You can see your friends. It's fun. Uh, you can go and, you know, do it, hear an interesting talk, see your friends afterwards. It's not that hard to be Jewish. It's not like a challenge. And can you really say, uh, I'm fulfilling the mission that God has for the Jewish people? I'm not sure I'm doing that much. If I'm going to have a nice meal and see my friends and have a few l'chaims, it just, uh, you know, it's also nice if you want to feel good about your faith. Even if you don't 100% agree with someone's doing you really, I mean, not someone who wants to kill you, that's a different matter, but someone who has a different approach, it's good to consider it and certainly hear something different. And obviously, I don't have an, any real reason to convert because I'm there, but I, I simply listen to Rabbi Meza's uh, YouTube videos, and I'm a big fan of short, good YouTube videos which catch attention and go viral. And when people look at my ads on ATAX and channel on YouTube, sorry, <laughs> um, I had to do that. But... It's it's just, you learn something interesting. I I don't pretend to have the greatest attention span in the world. I don't have a short attention span, but I appreciate people who really take their audience seriously, who are respectful of it, and often talk in sound bites and give you something memorable if you're going to spend four minutes of their time to hearing about a topic. And I was very impressed by what he did, and often... Asher, a what's his name? Asher Meza? Rabbi Asher Meza, and his Asher. website, I believe, is bejewish.org. Yeah, I was, I was just... They were very engaging. And another thing I have a problem with is they... Uh, <laughs> sorry, I got a little animated. That's okay. They, uh, That's okay. they talk about oh, current topics, sorry. like... Good luck getting someone to talk about homosexual so-called marriage at a uh, modern Orthodox seminary because you don't want to offend anyone. So you have some cute remarks, whatever. And good luck getting you know them to even talk about Islam too much other than maybe a cute little dig somewhere, but they're not going to really talk about it. Rabbi Meza, give him credit, is actually talking about these things in a way no one who is, I guess, in better with the observant Jewish establishment would be. And that's what I had to say. All right. Uh, 20 minutes past 3 o'clock. You're with Tom Trento on Trento Vision. CJ is with me today. Mark and Michael are not here. But we have from Philadelphia, from Center City in Philadelphia, beautiful place, by the way, um, and uh, some neat stuff there. I mean, we, we, we were in Independence Hall with Wilders, Geert Wilders, had a wonderful time. Um, these guys are here, Paul Singer, Adam Taxon, and today we're, we're going to go wherever the spirit leads in many respects, but we'll dig into some of the contemporary and current issues of the day from a national security perspective. We'll pick up a little later on on the four horsemen of uh, the uh, apocalypse for American foreign policy, as Barry Rubin uh, spoke about and as we uh, dealt with yesterday. But we want you to know that tomorrow I will not be here. You will be here, though. I you? will be here. The boys are still going to be in Orlando. The girl will be right here. I'll be in South Carolina. I'm speaking at the... Uh, much trouble. He needs to I'm, go out of town for the week. I'm speaking at the uh, <laughs> South Carolina Tea Party Convention on uh, some national security stuff, foreign law, all of this. You know what that means, right? um, Can you see that guys, on camera? Yeah, well, guess what? Yeah. When the zombies come and all hell breaks loose, you're going to be looking for the South Carolina Tea Party people because <laughs> they're going to be the ones that are going to be saving the, the republic. But tomorrow, who do we have here tomorrow? We have Peter Feynman, renowned Palm Beach County attorney, national committeeman for the Republican Party representing the state of Florida, author of several books. What are the names of those books? Uh, Wake Up America, yeah. and since you didn't. <laughs> it was on Islam. It was Wake Up. The Muslims are going to kill you. Uh, hang on one second. You actually may have a copy. Did he give you a copy? Yeah, yeah. Good, I have good, a copy good. with me. Yeah. All right. Um, he was here yesterday, Peter Feynman, and uh, we 
interviewed him and then let him do a little test run to be a uh, guest host. There's one of his, oh, that's his second book, The yeah. Next Nightmare. The Next Nightmare. And uh, basically, what is that all about? The Next Nightmare successfully chronicles how political correctness will destroy our great republic unless we are willing to identify our enemy and have the courage to speak out. Okay. And um, while you're looking for a good lawyer, Feynman Law, F-E-A-M-A-N Law.com. Feynman Law.com. Peter uh, has represented us in some of our cases has represented me personally, has uh, referred people for many of our friends. So he'll be here tomorrow, and you can call in tomorrow. You can call in today, too, if you want, uh, 888-565-1470. We have um, a couple of Philly boys here from uh, the south, you know, from the south side. That's the Italian section, right? Uh, Gino, yes, what? At one point. Gino's are um, Well, no, Gino's they wouldn't be eating that. Oh, you wouldn't? At one point I did. No. I went with uh, Gino's because it was more politically conservative. Oh, was it really? Yeah. yeah, that's a tough choice for me because uh, Pat Steaks is a personal friend of mine, but Gino Steaks obviously is a is just an which an is the one with all the lights. Well, they they both have just you know a lot of lights and mm -hmm. uh, but the the Ventos from Gino Steaks were at one point before he passed huge political advocate for conservative causes. Really. Oh. Now, uh, let's get which, is, which is which is hard in, in center city. That's not easy to do in that neighborhood. They, they they immediately attacked his business, and you know. They, when was this? About five years ago. Yeah, he died I, maybe a year or two ago. Yeah, I, heard, I, heard I want to that. put in one plug for the Jewish listeners who should be keeping kosher. Mila vegetarian on uh, I believe it's 16th between Locust and Walnut has a good. <laughs> it's kosher approved by Rabbi Hirsch in Center City. Good uh, vegan cheesesteak. So oh, really? you know, let's let's let us into this uh, okay, conversation yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we're uh, we're an equal opportunity uh, eater here. Um, and one other thing before we get into you guys, uh, our our uh, very good friend General Paul Vallely is writing extensively on some of the critical national security issues today. Got to go to his web website, Stand Up America, US dot org. You got to put the US. Or you wind up at Terry Jones's website. <laughs> yeah. The you know the pastor Terry Jones. Yeah. General Paul Vallely, you may have met him. He, he, Someone he's burned a Koran somewhere in the world. Let's go to Terry Jones Let's and see Terry what Jones. he has to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. That uh, guy. <laughs> but General Paul Vallely's website is StandUpAmericaUS.org. Make sure you go there. All right, let's establish who you guys are. We'll start with you, Adam. Uh, I, I presented you as a wing-eating, Harvard graduating, you know, Jeopardy playing, yeah. lawyer guy. Who, who are you and why are I you I am here? technically an attorney in the state of New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Lately, in the last year or so, I've been really de um, dedicated toward my writing. And in 2013, I've really tried to be on the cutting edge of where a lot of political uh, information is coming from. I run the Daily Beck on Facebook, which probably is going to be at 10,000 uh, members any day now, actually, if not today already. I haven't checked it. Um, Check I it clip the up Beck Glenn Beck's uh, show, and they seem to be okay with it. I put it I in segments, and I try to put cute little <laughs> pictures on it and make it just a little usable. Because So you go through all that material? I go through as much as I have the time to, and then it gets ads on, and I get some revenue out of it. That's really my main focus. Also, when I do my own uh, videos, I'm trying to make give people what they want. And not to take anything away from podcasts, but if you have four minutes, you know, you can't necessarily sit through a 40-minute podcast? podcast. You hear that term a, a lot. A podcast means if you're on Facebook, and that's the way a lot of people get these things. Um, if you're on Facebook, you see someone post something. Uh, you know, Adam Taxon discusses vegan cheesesteaks with Tom Trento. Is exactly. the title. I don't know if too many people are going to really want that one, but it's obviously the first one on my mind. You want to listen to it. It's a two-minute clip from the show. Uh, and people listen to it. If they like it, they share it, as opposed okay. to listening to, I'm not to so take anything awesome. away from your show, like 55 minutes without yeah, the commercials, uh, in which you, maybe you'll hear that, maybe not. I think it's the future, and I sort of want to be in on that. And, in fact, I'm now doing, I'm trying to avoid doing any writing because I only have so much time and energy. I'm trying to do everything on YouTube. So when I do a, I do a lot of theater reviews, cultural stuff. I go to... Oh, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, you went to Harvard University. Yeah. And you did a degree in economics. Yeah. Why? Um, 
kind of a default. I didn't really know what I wanted to do in life for a long time and sort of... Wait, wait, wait. You don't usually go, I don't know what I want to do. I'm going to go to Harvard. Well, no. You kind of get 15, 20 on your SATs and you have some pretty good records <laughs> from college. And I don't know if you think about it any more than anyone else. That happens but to me. But as a little kid, when you were 10, 11, 12, did you want to be a... Philadelphia fireman, a baseball player. What, what I mean, you wanted to be a baseball fireman, but when you're not really one of the better players on your, on a Philadelphia baseball player, but when you're not one of the better players on your little league team, it sort of sends you a message there. And when you have pretty bad vision, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the baseball yeah, thing isn't going to work out. But okay. go Phillies. Um, All right. So, at what point did you say um, Harvard? A, lo a lot of things. When I was at Harvard, and it was sophomore year, and you had to get a major. I think like. You want to avoid being a government major, which is also very interesting because it's kind of useless. You read books, at least something useful. And I like to say that they have a very Keynesian department, but my uh, work habits and study habits were atrocious enough that they didn't make a communist out of me. <laughs> I didn't pay attention in class often enough that I came out okay. Okay, so you make it through uh, Harvard and economics, and then you go, okay, I think I'll go to Columbia and become a lawyer. Well, I spent a few years... Uh, in between, I, I like to say doing time at an investment bank and uh, worked in consulting, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It wasn't but, for you. No, it really isn't. And it became clear. And often people can go that path, and that's great. But I think there's just a different plan for me. And I'm trying to keep this interesting for your audience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of things in my life I gave up trying to figure out why they're happening. I just sort of go with the flow. That's been something true in my personal life, actually, just in the last week, like stuff you couldn't even predict, mind-blowingly great. South of the border, let's go! Oh, I wasn't talking about like okay, hitting on okay. a waitress at South of the Border, okay. and that's just in case Mara was listening. <laughs> um, uh, just, CJ, you know South of the Border? No. Okay, we'll, we'll have to tell everyone. Everybody, <laughs> I got a good plug in that. I want to free Pedro Keychain when I come back. <laughs> Everyone who is not from New York, New Jersey, and, and comes down 95 to Florida, uh, you wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know about it. But if you are from there, you know what about exit it. You know about it. No, is south of the that. border. No. It's exit one for obvious reasons, yeah, 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 right yeah. across the border in South Carolina from North Carolina. But it's a, a Mexican themed place. <laughs> like, obviously, Mexicans are a lot more prevalent in America today than they were in the 1950s when there was something, I guess, a little more exotic about Mexico. And uh, it's this sort of resort. It's like a truck stop resort. But it's glorified. They have Pedro Land Amusement Park. They have all sorts of fireworks, T-shirts. It's just, and it's a very boring, you know, you go through some interesting parts of Virginia um, and Florida, but there's really, not to take anything away from those parts of North Carolina and South Carolina, but those are not the parts, I-95 <laughs> is not in those parts of North Carolina and South Carolina that people really visit. I mean, done North Carolina, people don't go on family trips there. Florence, South Carolina, is not Myrtle Beach, et cetera. And, and the bizarre thing, about 100 miles out both ways, north and south, mm -hmm. there's billboards every five feet. Pedro says it's hot today, cold to Mali or whatever. Yeah. Cold today, hot to Mali, all these goofy things. Like going to the Corn Palace. I don't know the Corn Palace. Where's that? Like in South Dakota or something. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. When you're driving across and, the country. And, I mean, it mesmerizes and almost hypnotizes For you. For five you've got states, to stop. Yeah, you've you got to stop. You see the You go there you and you go, to go, how many Mexican keychains can you possibly you know, have in or, or glasses with Pedro? Pedro's the... The uh, the mascot. The mascot. So, uh, wow. you're a sports guy. What's the mascot for uh, uh, Alabama? Crimson Tide. The elephant. Like well, the old Philadelphia Athletics. Yeah, why an elephant, you know? Um, I, I saw the size of some of those linemen, but I don't think yeah, that's... Yeah, that's yeah it was, actually. The, the, the size of the... Uh, they, 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 uh, they, they fought and were like... A, this is in the 30s oh, or really? whatever, like an elephant. But then something else popped in. Can I ask a dumb question? I, I know I should know this. I'm not, and I don't claim to be much of an expert on anything other than pro football and Major League Baseball. Was <laughs> Alabama actually that good a team before Bear Bryant? I mean, I don't know if Before that, Bear Bryant? Yeah, I mean, before uh, the 50s, were they really one of the great programs? That's a Kenny question. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Almost we'll have to wait till 4 o'clock to get into those issues. Into those think. issues. Yeah. All right, so you, you, uh, you go to law school, and um, when did you graduate law school? I graduated in uh, 2001. I said 10 years ago. Yeah. Right, 12, 11 worked years. worked as a lawyer before. Uh, what kind of law? At some point, you got to decide criminal law, business law. Done some commercial litigation work. All right. And um, you don't like it? What's it no, I just, you know, I think a lot of people just, you have to sort of, I'm the, 
you, you have to have passion and not to take anything away from lawyers who work hard and are really great, but I'm not good at things if I don't have passion about them. And that's true of personal relationships. I'm either there or I'm not. When I'm there, I'm totally there. And I'm enjoying being on your show right now, so hopefully that's true. Um, but, I mean, when, like, when you do writing, when You're you do really creative here. stuff, I mean, you can't be everything. You can't be good at everything. And certain personality types are diff. And when I'm writing something or I'm creating something good, I am so hyper-focused uh, that... You know, I can't do anything else, and that Paul often involves, like, the, the, not going to the bathroom until the last possible moment. Or Paul gets the medication out. Or well, no, there's no medication I, or you anything. You have to push him away. You have to pull him a little bit further back from the microphone. Uh, that's right. Now, you hang on one second. How do you fit into this uh, dynamic <laughs> duo here? How you get into this? Yeah. You know, I'm actually reevaluating that as I'm, I'm really wondering. You mean the car ride yeah, didn't what, do it for what you? Happened? Look, let me do this car ride. This is the, if, I couldn't even explain to you this car ride. If you could imagine, <laughs> imagine for a second, one Orthodox Jew, one guy here thinking about, seriously about Judaism, listening to Dennis Prager Bibles. Oh. Bibles, you know, Dennis Prager oh, also right. has the complete yeah. Bible commentary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're going, Prager University. We're, yeah. we're, we're listening to YouTube podcasts of Reverend Manning, Rabbi Mezer, um, Listening to Dennis Prager's Bible commentary. God, this is like a trip for this a was, mission for God. Actually, God. This was a mission from God. It yeah. really was. Well, there was some personal discussion and crude conversation too. I don't want to give the that sounds that like we're a seeing. fun road trip well, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with that much yeah. spirituality, and morality, yet we had to spice it occasionally yes. with some personal nonsense. Uh, otherwise, know. otherwise we would have probably hit a car and went straight to heaven. Well, there's, there's, I mean, <laughs> we almost did. That was why we got off the road in Chester, Virginia, when we did. That was the story. The um, and and my background with with Adam, I was uh, involved and in CJ. We were involved with bringing Geert Wilders, who's the um, Dutch parliamentarian, who is a, a avowed pro-Western, anti-Islamic jihad. He's not anti-Muslim. He's anti-Islamic jihad uh, leader in Europe. He uh, came to Florida. We had him here. We hosted him here. And, in fact, we, we had him at a, uh, a hotel in uh, Delray Beach. And the hotel, the last minute, uh, backed out of the contract and all this. And Peter Feynman and was Peter our Feynman lawyer. And helped us with right? that. And helped yeah. us. Yeah, I was actually it. at that event at the Union League with Oh, you? Oh, I was there. Uh, well, in April... Okay, and you don't remember me either. Well, actually, I didn't really know Adam that well at that point. That was a couple of years back. Yeah, it was 2009. Well, April of 2009, we had him here. Okay. No, I and think then, it was 2010. I just, 2009. I just finished the Mark for Death, by the way. Oh, no, no, about, no, no, about no. a month back. So did I. Yeah, it was great. Isn't that a very no, good No, in October. Was it October or November? April... April of 2009, we had him no, here. No, in Florida. I'm talking about in Philadelphia. October of 2009. It was October. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We had him out there, and yeah. uh, Wilders, and that's where. But I started working with you earlier than yeah. than that because well, you I were in Philly a lot. Yeah, I was in Philly quite a bit. And uh, as much fun as we're having today, you're a very serious guy dealing with a lot of serious issues and uh, national security stuff and um, Jewish stuff. And but what, now, what is your angle? Your your friends, but what do you do for a living? I know he's. I don't know what you do for a living yet. You used to be a lawyer. You're trying to make a, a well, I used transition. To, uh, you know, basically, my 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 professional background is I'm a private real estate lender. So, in some terms, they call that a hard money lender. I guess somebody in the Obama administration might call that a predatory lender. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, private private real estate financing and private real estate investment. So that's sort of been my background for about 25 years. And, um, you know, during this last recession, which has been the at the center point of the recession, has really been the war against small business lenders and real estate professionals by this administration. So um, it's given me a lot more time to start to focus on outside interests, many of which are the things that we talked about, the, uh, the growing problem that I see in the country where um, we really have this complacency towards Sharia Islam, radical Islam, and um, just like an acquiescence and everybody just looking the other way. Uh, now, how did you, I mean, this is the work we do, gotcha. so I mean, that's what we do, but how did you come, you're, you're trying to loan money to buy houses and all this regular stuff and things get rough. 
what what was the sort of the epiphany or the 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 moment of um, recognition on your part that oh my god something's wrong here well this you know personally my my journey has been you know i'm from philadelphia i'm a street kid from philadelphia so um you know and i'm this is not the first rodeo and i've i've seen this in on our streets in Philadelphia, in our prisons. You've seen it. Well, describe it, it for the viewers and well, listeners. What do we really have in America today? What we've had is we've had, since probably the late 60s, in the African-American communities, this growing um, undercurrent of anti-Americanism, which pretty much manifests itself through... The Black Panthers in Philadelphia in 2010 holding sticks and not letting people go into the voting yeah, precinct. Remember actually, that? that guy that was at the Black Panthers, uh, I was at a funeral about two weeks before that for a friend of mine who it was an African-American guy who died from cancer, a close friend of mine, who he was also friends with this guy. So we, I was probably like one of, I think I was the only white guy. Couple white guys. I was the only white guy at the funeral. So that's sort of some of the, some of the circles that I've traveled in, too. Sure. And, um, you know... It was funny because actually one on one, you know, I don't think that guy would have really had too much to say to me. I mean, you know, right, right, you right. see a white guy at a all black funeral, you know, it's yeah. not the guy you want to start with. Uh, by the way, <laughs> you mentioned the new Black Panthers, and that election day thing was horrible. It's a total indictment of the of Eric Holder and the Department of Justice, and it is what it seems. However, I don't think that they have that much support. I imagine most blacks wouldn't tell us this because they wouldn't admit it. I imagine they find him and his probably two or three friends kind of annoying, uh, would be my guess. The real issues are the real nation of Islam. And uh, there you see on the streets of Philadelphia, women in burqas looking like they're out of Star Wars all the time, just nonstop, and it's growing and growing. In Center the City. Real in the, in the, That's the, the real threat, not the yeah. so-called new Black Panthers. Yeah, the real, the real threat. Look, here's to my original point. Um, what, we, what I've seen firsthand you know, just being a kid in Philadelphia and growing up is, you know, we've seen a shift in the black community change from Christian, Baptist, Methodist to Islam. And uh, I think you started the show out with something along these very same lines where the black community is losing their own community. One of the things that I do in addition is um, I'm involved in a street ministry uh, I'm a volunteer for a street ministry started by a friend of mine who's a former union boss and uh, who did seven years in penitentiary. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. This, so he has a, he has a street ministry. What, 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 a Jewish street ministry? No, no, no. He's, he's Christian. I'm just, I just volunteer there because I happen to be a ex-boxer and mixed martial artist. Okay. So I train kids there. And oh. There's no Jewish street ministry to volunteer. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. Zero. None. Maybe so you're just looking to help kids get off just the street or whatever. Just looking to help because, I, you know, I've been there and I know what the deal is. And um, it's at one of the worst drug corners in Philadelphia, Kensington and Somerset. It's a notorious national drug corner. Is that corner. down by Temple University? And over there? Kind of much worse area than Temple. Really? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, this is like, this is something you see walking zombies, heroin addicts, right. uh, you know, just walking back and forth, you know, 15, 16 year olds prostituting. It's the, it's the bottom of, of the barrel. And in this is one of those great places. But what we see, what I see traveling back and forth, and what we see is just this growing amount in the in the urban black community of uh, you know anybody who's been in into a pe prison system or a penitentiary is basically forced to convert to Islam. Yeah. That's how it goes, and uh, it's seen as a religion of strength because it's a, a religion that focuses on a lot of violent aspects. Right. Um, it's appealing. You know, if you're in an incarcerated situation and you're scared and you're terrified and maybe someone's going to press up on you or possibly rape you, you yeah. know, now you're involved in a group as opposed to an individual, which is some of the foundations of Christianity and Judeo principles. If the neo-Nazis are coming after you, who do you want to be yeah. with? Well, we don't have any neo-Nazis in Philadelphia prison systems, that's for sure, because probably our, our city population is probably less than 15% white or maybe 20% at most. Really? So, yeah, so it's, it's an <laughs> urban, Hispanic, and, and black prison population. So this is, this is a, a, a dilemma, and it's a oh, real... It is. It makes a lot of sense. Sure. And it's a real dilemma, not just... It, it, and amazingly, one of the groups that doesn't mention how much of a dilemma it is is black Christians, decent black Christians. They're very that have silent. Lost, well, there's, I think, a website, or I think it's called... Or a movie, isn't it? Losing Our Sons? Yeah. Isn't that what that's about? 
Uh, a little, a little different. A little it's uh, jihadi shot. Yeah. Uh, okay. A, a black jihadi shot a white army kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the two fathers got together and yeah. uh, are seeking to try to stop that kind of stuff and help. But people. it was about part of it was about the recruitment. Okay, of, there was a piece about recruitment. Yeah, about yeah, yeah, the yeah. recruitment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've had them on the show. Yeah. We've done a lot of. Lot so of stuff let me ask you, what what happened in the in the early '60s? Blacks in this country were Christian and loved John F. Kennedy and loved America. And then Johnson comes along with the Great Society, and everybody goes on welfare, and everything breaks down. Well, uh, pretty much. I mean, I mean, Dennis Prager, one of my heroes, calls it the age of stupidity. I mean, uh, you know, it seems like everybody has just basically lost their mind where this entitlement that came in, you know, the entitlement that, that came in... Look, uh, my wife's from Eastern Europe. When you go into a society where you don't have to, where, where we get away from individualism, and um, you don't have to think, you don't have to do, um, it's like quicksand. It's easy to fall in. Very hard to get and out. And that's a major appeal of Islam because you're encouraged not to think. In fact, you're instructed not to think. Well, uh, everything is thought out for you I, I don't in every I, aspect of your life. Now, let me let me just add one thing because you brought up Lyndon Johnson, and I think it would be interest for your audience, especially if they're on Google right now. They should put in uh, Lyndon Johnson and the words "I'll have them." I won't say the other word on the air, but it begins with an "ed." Voting and uh, voting Democratic for the next 300 years. That pretty much is following up on what you said. Oh, really? Yeah. You never heard that quote? No. Lyndon Johnson said yeah. that, and. Uh, the agenda was to make them dependent on government. Yeah. And uh, again, you're not going to want to say that on the air. Yeah. Well, there's, there's and I was married to a political science professor who like knew everything Johnson ever said mm-hmm. and did, yeah. and that's how I. Well, you find that. I mean, yeah. whether it's whether it's whether it's uh, Lyndon Johnson, whether it's Margaret Sanger, whether it's Planned Parenthood, you know, it's interesting because we're some people will say, hey, these ultra conservatives, they're really uh, Islamophobes, they're racist, or this or that. When we actually do the research and find out that the history of these movements, we find the exact opposite. We find that those that want to come with five dollars handout are typically the most racist of all, because their agenda is to to, to breed a continual subsistence. All right. Well, uh, that, I've never heard this before. Actually, that's something interesting for us to talk about with uh, with Peter tomorrow, because one of the things that Peter Feynman does, who's going to be our guest host tomorrow, is he volunteers um, as a uh, what a prison the prison uh, chaplain. Uh, yeah, uh, as yeah. a prison chaplain. Um, he goes in Christians. and he's a Christian yeah. and he goes into all that. Christian. Yeah, 1964, yeah. Lyndon Johnson uttered the word, the N word, yeah. in relation to having a, a, a race and a cast of people brainwashed into voting for Democratic candidates. Yeah. 1964. And it's so much Dumb. worse because of the vote fraud. And in Philadelphia, you know, Paul actually can really talk about what happened there. It's so overwhelming, you can't get uh, anyone monitoring the voting there, and you see the results of what happened in Philadelphia and in places near here, like Fort Pierce, where you can't get anyone, presumably white, to we were, monitor the election. We, we were uh, very involved in the Fort Pierce, Allen West campaign. Allen was our, our uh, congressman in this district, and he went up there about an hour and a half north. And that was just horrendous. But I got a question related back to uh, Lyndon Johnson here. Did he ever make a statement using the J word? I'll have those Jewish people oh, voting. Uh, well, you could, I would think like the K word, and that's not really comparable. But first of all, why would he need to? The Jews have been stupidly <laughs> voting Democrat for so long. Like he can't take that's personal true. credit for that. FDR, the idiots who voted for FDR, despite the fact that he uh, sent the ships back. That we're taking. Uh, eventual Holocaust victims. I Don't ask me about that. <laughs> but Lyndon John, it was, unfortunately, it's been a problem long before LBJ. Well, we, we started this show um, Monday, Labor Day, uh, September 3rd. And, and we were doing it for two months, uh, basically to beat up Obama and to, uh, to educate the voting populace in Florida, number three state right now, 29 electoral votes, to vote intelligently on national security issues, which meant don't vote for President Obama. 
we failed. Okay, we failed in our mission, though we saw a dramatic increase in our radio listening audience of people that uh, yeah, that we did pretty well over. in this yeah. district. Yeah, and um, and then one thing led to another, and we're we're staying on the air. We're doing an hour a day, then now it's three hours a day, and our mission is what we do as an organization. I run the United West, but the Trento, which is a, a counterterrorism educational educational organization. Trento Vision side is the command and control communications for organizing the counter-jihad movement in America and for making President Obama's days just miserable and horrible. Um, and we, we do a lot of work on what he does and his ideology and his Marxist background and all that. But we got somebody that wants to talk to somebody here. Yes, we have you? Mark on the line, and he probably wants to oh, talk to you. Oh, this is our Mark you. again, oh boy. Yeah. No, he may have uh, something to ask. Yes, yeah, I, I think he probably has something to ask, ask add about yeah. the uh, the thinking aspect, probably. Yes. What's up, Mark? Yeah, well, one little correction. Alabama football history is one of the oldest universities. Of football goes all the way back to 1892. And they, they were very successful before Bear Bryant. But anyway, other than that. How many national championships? I, I really don't know. Did they win a lot of national championships We're going to do that? sports okay. in the next hour, okay, boys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over the over the over the span, 100, 150 wins, twenty four losses. Oh. But uh, yeah, so it did really well. But uh, back to the uh, you know the, the thought part about in the prison system that you guys were talking about earlier. It's uh, it, you know there, there, there's a definite uh, from Christianity that they're losing them all because when you come to Islam. If you look at it from a male perspective, mm -hmm. Islam is a pretty nice religion. I mean, you're, you're immediately put in power, you're immediately put in charge, you can have you know, multiple wives, and if you kill yourself and name jihad, you get 72 virgins. <laughs> it, it really does have a, and, and the great thing about it is you do not have to think in Islam. There is there's no requirement to think at all in Islam, you just have to act and do. So everything is pretty much laid out for you. It's a very appealing religion to people who don't want to think who don't have any ideas about who they are. I mean, it's almost instant honor, if you think about it from a male perspective. It's really very appealing. Yeah, Mark, I uh, I often say, and it's something I came up with on my own, I'm sure others have said similar things, if you got a bunch of violent criminals and said, okay, guys, here's your project for the day, if you, uh, come up with a religion, it would probably come up come out pretty close <laughs> to Islam. And you didn't mention, really also, based on, you know, I saw something that a cleric, in, I guess I should pause and say that breathlessly, a cleric <laughs> in Egypt uh, said in the last 24 hours, he said, women who were uncovered are just asking to be raped. And so that means, okay, go ahead and rape them, good Islamic men, you know. So, yeah, hey, that's yeah, another thing that uh -huh. appeals to men of a certain degenerate type. Well, that raises a, that raises a larger issue, Mark, too. Um, what, what contribution has Islam made to the West? Well, exactly. I mean, you think about it. I mean, well... Culling the population? Spinning out the herds, right? Graphic is a thousand and one reasons, but we won't go into that. But the, uh, the point being, they have not... They have not contributed hardly anything, you know. No, I mean, I mean I, I'm not being, you know, pejorative or, or facetious. Um, I, I was doing some some thinking, some serious thinking. What significant contribution has Islam made to Western civilization? Can anybody think of anything? Other well, I think they would Israel? argue. What, yeah, what would what would they argue? First of all, they would argue. First of all, that uh, they're not part of Western civilization. They're concerned with Eastern civilization. But nonetheless, no, they haven't because the way that we measure things. Look, if we look at all the greatest advancements in Western civilization, we have to, when we fundamentally are honest. We have to look at where Judeo-Christianity has entered and played a role, and is there some elevational aspect of it that creates these scientific endeavors, these uh, cultural endeavors. If we look at classical music, whether we look at uh, art, whatever it is, very rarely have you seen any, if we, even in America, we look at all our schools of higher education, none were started by atheists. They were all started by one religious denomination or another. None were started by Islamics. There was no mosque that started these universities. They were either Jewish universities of learning, Christian universities of learning, you know, or different different denominations. Um, I actually did think of one, and I have to play devil's advocate here. Uh, if you look at, think of the best, most known, like, as long as you can't help but like pop songs of the last 40 years, I believe uh, the man, the main force behind Cool in the Gang, uh, I'm talking about the song Celebration, is Muslim. 
I just had to add that to answer the question fairly. But if you were an observant Muslim, you wouldn't be allowed to listen to yeah, it. So, we got, so how does that help? we got a little disconnect there. <laughs> okay, so that doesn't work. Next. Next. Um, the, well, if we, I don't if, know. I was thinking about, um, like, uh, area rugs, but... Yeah, well, maybe Persian. You know, from a decorating point of view, there are a lot of fine contributions. No, but if you remember, on uh, June fourth, two thousand nine, it um, was at Cairo, Cairo University, uh, in Cairo. Our president made his famous apology tour and that whole deal there, and he he spoke extensively about the contributions of Islam, not to the West, but to whom. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood to the United <laughs> yes <laughs> to the United States of America that it, that it's had such a tremendous I know um, it it reminded me of uh, it oh. reminded me of when in in upstate in, in New York like ten or fifteen years ago that to to help the um, they decided that there was a way to explain how the Iroquois actually were responsible for the writing of our Constitution or something like that, because they wanted those people to feel good about themselves in school. Well, we, we now have jihadis here, people in the Brotherhood, that are very extensive. We watched and we know them. Inside They're, the administration or outside the yeah, administration? Both. Both. both, yeah. Here in Florida that are putting out material talking about... Um, uh, Muslims coming over, you know, predating Columbus and, and, right. and being involved America in America and all of this. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's just a complete rewriting of history that has no basis in any anything. But if anybody... Nothing yeah. to do with reality. No, it's, but it's nice how the left, the radical left in America, has um, discredit, you know, real honest information. You know, it doesn't really matter anymore. No, so you can kind of just make anything up. Since they've paved the road to make-believe, of course, it opens the door, you know, that you can just, I mean, you're talking about what contributions. I mean, the contributions we should be talking about are the contributions that the U.S. taxpayer is making to actually fund the enemy against us. Yeah, it's amazing. It's just I want to get on. Can you guys hang around for the next hour? Uh, I, I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, or a portion of it, whatever. What, what I want to do, Mark, yeah, you want to say something? Yeah, one, one uh, ten second thing. I just want to, like you said, in Obama's apology tour, the worst thing that Obama's apology or did was the Muslims do not take responsibility for their actions in the first place. And his apology tour simply just reinforced that belief and just made them worse. That's the worst thing they worst thing he's done as far as president to the Islamic world. Yeah, good point. Um, here's here's what I want to do. Uh, in uh, in the next hour, we're going to take a break in a few minutes. Here, um, we're going to we're going to get into some of the national security issues, and you guys know about those things. But there's a fascinating article that I saw the other day, and uh, Dr. Keith Ablo, he's on Fox News. If you ever seen him, a psychologist, he wrote an article on uh, entitled "We Are Raising a." Now, so we're jumping ahead now from you know the 60s and what happened there to the. 21st century, we are raising a generation of deluded narcissists. Listen to this opening sentence, and then we'll talk about it. A new analysis of the American Freshman Survey, which has accumulated data for 47 years from 9 million young adults, reveals that, this is crazy, college students are more likely than ever to call themselves gifted and driven to succeed, even though their test scores and time spent <laughs> studying are decreasing. Okay, they're deluded so narcissists, and he goes yeah. through this, and it is amazing. But we'll be right back, and we'll talk with Adam and Paul and CJ all about this. I have an article. Uh, uh, million wild animals are killed each year, illegally. Poaching is just one of the risks animals face at our hands. I'm Tom Barry. I'm an actor. I grew up in the beautiful rural countryside of Ohio, where animals roam freely in the open forests. I have a deep concern to help preserve those open spaces for our wildlife friends so they can live and thrive like they used to. Destruction of their habitats threaten their very existence. 
The best way to protect wildlife is to protect the land where they live. The Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust works with private landowners to protect wildlife, to preserve natural habitats, and establish permanent sanctuaries. To learn more or to work with the Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust,